Webster Tar Bleed is coming up in the gauntlet, up next. <laughs> it's Ron Paul demonization campaign. All lined up. The truth. Matter. Just the truth. Just the veritas. Just the facts. Is it sure? And the wa that water is moving too. Which water? Hold that for a minute. Hold it open too. All right, let me just say this first. Uh, Webster Tarley is a great political mind. He has a master's in, well, uh, all economy. He's an economist, but he also has a doctorate in history. Very smart guy. I've done my own research. His perspective on history is dead on. He has had an obsession with Ron Paul in the last six months. I'm a cockroach, you name it. And now, even though Ron Paul... Yeah, I heard it. Uh, even though Ron Paul, uh, okay, we're going to go to you in a minute, Webster. Even though Ron Paul is now not even, you know, obviously in the running now because election fraud and things, he obsesses on what the Huffington Post, Salon, and all the big foundation groups have put out. When they came out and confronted me this week, they said, well, this, uh, the founder of PayPal is giving him millions. As Ron Paul said six months ago, I have no control over who gives me money. Uh, yes, one member of the Bilderberg Group gives me money, but the rest of them are taxing. They want big government for corporate welfare. But I like Tarpley, and if he wants to obsess over Ron Paul, that's fine. So he can go over that first, because I like Tarpley. Okay? But then I'd like to ask Tarpley about what he really knows about the first Russian in modern history, Ed Bilderberg, Kasparov, all the things that means. The fact that no fan of Russia or China, but compared to our criminal government, there's no d doubt the West is trying to start a thermal nuclear war. There's no doubt they're moving weapons in. I mean, Yev and Putin have said they'll nuke the West. There's no doubt they're using Al Qaeda in Syria. There's no doubt they took over Libya, and Webster had the courage to go there and cover that. I respect Webster for his courage. I really do, and I think this Ron Paul obsession is a, is a dead letter. But he wants to talk about it. We're going to cover it. So can we just spend five minutes on that? And then I really want to take on things that I know you're accurate on. Uh, but again, to say that one Bilderberg, because they want to co-op the libertarian movement to try to privatize things, not real privatization, but have government takeover of something, and then, and, then, and then corporations act as government, that's not what Ron Paul stands for. Webster's point, though, about uh, Rand meeting with Mitt Romney, I knew that Romney and them were talking about that. I knew that, that was being discussed. And Rand told me on and off. He said, well, I won't compromise on my ideals, so that's the difference. I probably won't even get it. Webster sees that as total proof of a sellout. I know the system of the establishment demonizes Ron Paul. I know from our moles inside, including people in security and other places, I'll leave it at that, that when they pull up, they see us as Ron Paul supporters out there protesting them, and they say, I hope that you know, Ron Paul dies in a plane crash. I mean, that's a real source. That's real stuff. I didn't just go from Tucker, who I trust, because he's proven stuff. I, I called my people, and they said, well, we didn't hear that, but, yeah, they cuss Ron Paul. And then Webster jokes and says, oh, my source is the major pensions. They hate him. They don't get pensions working at the Marriott. Yeah, whatever. The, yeah, the precious food stamps. The, I mean, look, 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 look at the stuff. The point is you're getting us dependent on the bankers. The point is... Get into your Ron Paul stuff, but then I want to lead into the other areas. So Webster, uh, Richard Reeves doing a great job, is going to hold the mic over there. And we are streaming out on two systems, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. Ron Paul, the enemy of humanity. Tell us about it. Well, let's actually start with Rand Paul, right? You seem to think that Rand Paul has some kind of integrity. My information is that Rand Paul made a pilgrimage secretly to the offices of the Weekly Standard and uh, essentially deal with William Crystal that Rand Paul would uh, commit to being open to an attack on Iran, which he is in public. He he's, says that he's willing to enter an attack on Iran and that he would support, vote for, economic warfare measures against Iran. Now, we've just had Ron and Paul flirting in public with Romney, and he's obviously making a bid for the vice presidential spot. Now, based on the Bilderberger group here, it's like Mitch Daniels is in the line ahead of Rand Paul. But even so, we should remember that the whole idea of the Ron Paul campaign 
was to get rent as vice president. In other words, if you've been knocking yourself out, sweating blood, giving money bombs and whatever it is, to Ron Paul, you've got to realize that the whole purpose of that is to get Rand on the Republican ticket for vice president. Because even though he has no qualifications, he thinks he should be president. It reminds me of other people that we've, we've passed. The fact is, though, that Romney has now gone over the 1144 mark on his own power. So he won't need Ron Paul at the convention to transfer the delegates to him. So at that point, My Rand... My was is that Romney reached out to Rand. I mean, Rand shouldn't meet with him? It's the deal in the background. Now, let's talk about the deal. The deal is that Romney is a weak candidate, and he knows it. He needs so conservative credentials. He's got to have two wingmen. He's got to have a left wing man. That was his cousin, his cousin Huntsman. Huntsman being uh, this Mormon billionaire. So Huntsman was the main purpose in those debates, was to run interference for, for uh, Romney, to uh, fend off attacks, and whoever was the main, main enemy of, Ron, uh, of, of Romney at the time, whether it was Bachman or Kane or Perry or Gingrich or Santorum, whoever it was, the main activity of Ron Paul was to attack Romney's main enemy at any given time. He also did other services. In Virginia primary, here we are in Virginia, we had a primary. This was a head-on, a one-to-one -one primary, Paul against Romney. Ron Paul punted. He wouldn't campaign because he was afraid of defeating Romney. Now, that might have caused the collapse of the Romney campaign. So Ron Paul's goal is to keep Romney as the leading candidate, but at the same time get enough delegates so that he is indispensable for Romney. And he wasn't able to thread a couple of other things. Romney wanted to avoid debates. The Georgia debate was aborted because Romney said he didn't want to go. Ron Paul agreed he didn't want to go. The art, same story, didn't want to go. Uh, so R Ron Paul is a kind of an auxiliary to the entire Romney campaign. That was always a talking point. What's your proof? This is my What's your discovery. I, I was out of the gate on the 10th of January with this, the 10th of January. My proof is if you watch those Republican debates and you can't see that Romney is there to be is, is being helped by Rand Paul, by Ron Paul. You don't have any political judgment. In other words, it's Paul ran five different ads again. Me, that was an establishment Democratic talking point. This was the first one. It was mild. It was that he was a flip flopper. Everybody else was a criminal or whatever he was. They are, but Romney was only a flip flopper. Let's take the Michigan primary. The the function of Ron Paul is to take 10 or 15 percent of anti-establishment Republican voters and put them in the deep freeze, put them in the, in the candidate who's never going to win, can't get the nomination. Romney's problem was that the Republicans is maybe 40 percent people, you know, country club, plutocrats, whatever, who would vote for Romney. That leaves 50, 60 percent who would vote for an anti candidate. So what Ron Paul does is take 15 percent, sometimes 17 percent of the anti-establishment Republican votes off the table. Now, Michigan primary, look at a couple of others, but Michigan is the clearest. Romney won Michigan by a paper-thin margin. That's the Ron Paul effect. Now, Ron Paul didn't win Michigan, but he did pay with his money for anti-Santorum uh, uh, election ads. So you're in the presence of a deceptive This is not real. Ron Paul is famous as a nepotist. My figures are that he's got 60 people plus of his relatives, relatives from the congressional office payroll or on the payroll of his campaign. Jesse Benton, that a lot of people in the Ron Paul campaign tell me they can't stand, is to Ron Paul's granddaughter, I believe, right? And remember, the entire purpose of the campaign is nepotism. It's to feather the nest for little Rand so that he has a future. And again, let's look at who this is. This is Romney. Now, people, I think the, the better people who are interested in Ron Paul, they don't really understand economics, although they should. So Obama's going to save us? No. no. Uh, the, the, the Bilderberg people are, are turning uh, for Romney. Romney, Mitch Daniels. But they just... The word I've got is Romney is in from all the big power brokers. Okay, that's, that's the Bilderberg. Bilderberg is throwing their weight, which is considerable, on the side of Romney, Mitch Daniels. But now you, you want to get me away from this, uh, this, this last point oh, that I had. Uh, I'm not trying to get you away from anything, Webster. I came over here to interview... Uh, Junker, and I, and, and I nicely, you're my friend, I said I'd interview you, you were interrupting, telling me shut up, and now you're saying I want to keep you for the audience, that's bullshit. Now listen, that's bullshit. 
No, 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 no. I'm just saying, I'm interviewing you. I'm not trying to censor you, but I've used on all this. That's all. For heaven's sakes, I'm not trying to shut you down. Make your point. I want to get your point on Al-Qaeda, Syria, Libya, Russia, uh, the Russian at the meeting. I want to talk about that and so this obsession about Ron Paul. A vote for Ron Paul was a vote for Romney. And this is the tragic reality. And I sympathize with people who were, were duped in this regard. Remember, Ron Paul vote, runs as an anti-war candidate, even though he voted for the Afghan war. You should remember, Ron Paul voted for the Afghan war. Like Kerry, he was for the Afghan war before he was against it. Now he's against it. Now let's look at Romney. If you're supporting Romney, what are you going to get? The biggest warmonger. Romney is out there saying that Russia is the main strategic enemy of the United States, and Romney is out there saying that he doesn't want the option to attack Iran in, 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 on the table. He wants it in his hand. So a vote for... Well, there you go, Webster. Ron Paul's a warmonger. Two days after 9-11, he says, okay, use of force to Afghanistan to get bin Laden. Now, now you're saying he's a warmonger. He's been against all these damn wars. Voted for the Afghan war. Barbara Lee voted I think this is sophistic, Tarbley. I'm very Barbara embarrassed. Lee voted against it. Ron Paul voted for it. You look for a statesman. Barbara Lee is a statesman. Ron Paul didn't make the... The difference is you have a belief in the state to empower... Ron Paul doesn't. You're dodging the issue. If the big thing with Ron Paul is that he's against imperialist wars, how come he voted for the Afghan war? Where's, where, where's the beef? In other... Now, the underlying all this, right... We're talking about the Mormons, okay? An important issue. The theology of the Mormons is that they are anti-black. The, the, the holy books. Yeah, right. The holy books of the Mormon church say that the blacks, black population, Afro-Americans, are the spawn of the people who sided with Lucifer in the great battle in heaven. This was then away in 1978. I would say that Ron Paul represents the southern jurisdiction of the Scottish right of Freemasonry, which means the old hold Confederates. On, on. Mason first group, some good, some bad. There's no proof of Ron Paul and Masonry. You are pulling out. Why are, why are the, why are the globalists so upset at Ron Paul? The daughters are in the Rainbow Girls. The parents are all Freemasons. I think there's a really, pretty good the case. Proof of that? They never produced the proof on that. You're going off rumors, Tarpley. I think that's pretty good research. Anyway, let, so let now, him... Let him so now, I thought you liked the American system. I'm not endorsing the Masons, but George Washington and all those guys. Now if you're a Mason, now if you're a Mason, you're the devil. Not the devil, but when you put that together with the rest of this stuff. What I see... El Diablo. I see a convergence between the Scottish Rite Freemasons, Mormonism, which is a religion which has profound Freemasonic overtones. It is a Masonic religion. Yeah, I, I, I think there is this element to it, yes. So... Right now we have Rand Paul flirting with Romney in public, and I, if I were a Ron Paul supporter, my worldview would be crashing to the ground right now, after all that work and all the sacrifices. Now, Alex, be let sure me that, talk to that, you. Be sure that states' rights movement is destroyed. Let me talk. Yes, yeah, states' rights has always been a reactionary slogan. States' rights. Only the federal supreme government will save us for Soviet recollectivization. Yes, only Sovietism will save us. No, Get I'm Ron almost Paul. finished. I'm almost finished. Get if Ron I could Paul. just remember what the last point was. Uh, <laughs> Brain buggers. 2.7. Oh. Brain buggers. Look, uh, to talk then about Ron Paul's economics, let's get down. The thing that got me going on, Ron Paul made a terrible mistake. He published his economic views on his website in the Restore America program. Now, Ron Paul, when he gets up on the, on the stump, Ron Paul can dance and bob and weave and dan you know, shuffle with the best of them. But when he puts the numbers on the page, let's look at the United States. You've got about 50 people who, thanks to Bill Clinton, he said it's gonna be slowly are in. Man. No, one can no, say dependency no, been no, no. He talks about $1 trillion in cuts in one year. One trillion dollars in cuts in the first year, and then balance but the, the budget. Bankers, they don't want that. They want us to. They seem it. to want it. Quite a few of them do want it. Peter Thiel is a pretty banker, and he seems to think He's it's great. He's only one member. I don't know how many you need. Come on, you got to so, stop this stuff. Devil, your obsession with Ron Paul. It's not. No, you, your obsession with defending him. No, you Let me talk to you. You are better than Ron Paul. You don't need Ron Paul. Let's take an issue like 9/11. 
you have stuck to your guns on 9-11 truth. Since you brought that up, Paul was asked four years ago about it, and and he said, well, he's been so busy he hasn't you know been able to deal with it, but he knows about on, but he knows about false flag. Let me talk. It's okay if I talk. Fall, you asked me a question. You asked me a question. I'm giving you like five minutes at a time, Tarbley. Ron Paul, he knows false flag terror is real. There's been a CIA coup. All that. Ron Paul, I know him. Did he say that on the presidential debates? He said that on my show and others. I know Ron Paul's family, man. He, he Ron Paul is good. All I know is there's bigger. Why are you so obsessed with Ron Paul? Useful idiots for your Soviet model? Who are getting hijacked by a flim flam on. All right. Ron Paul is the most successful con. Six, 60 seconds on your obsession with him. I want to get to all these other issues. <laughs> oh, really? Only Ron Paul. In the entire galaxy, it's all Ron Paul. Not Syria, no. not Libya, not Russia, not NATO, not Europe collapsing, not the pigs being sucked dry. Ron Paul, Ron Paul, he's so evil, he's so bad. Tarpley, Tarpley, he'll save us. You, Along with the communists. You are undercutting. If you want to protest Bilderberg, I would say to you, go out there and say, Ron Paul, Ron Paul. I know a lot of people, including myself, who say, I don't want to hear about any reactionary Republican for the rest of my life. I'm sick of I want people. a good communist candidate. I don't want any of them. I know a lot of people who, after Bush swore that they would never vote for a reactionary Republican for 10,000 years. And now, hey, I'm against power structure. Yeah, can, we now, can we now move on to the next? Can we now move on to the next? Do we move? Why do we have to be tied to a cynical policy? Well, I exposed Obama. I exposed Bush. I exposed Bush. But you're running interference for Ron Paul, and he's running interference for Romney. Where does that leave you? Listen, uh, Romney's an unknown country. I've exposed his ties to Bain, all of it. Now, listen, stop right there. Finish up with your Ron Paul. Fa Let's move on to the next subject. Go ahead. A vote for Rom for Ron Paul was a vote for Romney. Show you love. So you're no, no, no. I I take second Tarkley, place. Move on from the Ron Paul. I take critic. second place Where's to nobody. Tarkley? I was the first out of the so gate. The I was Ron the Paul first. The first, I think, in the relevant universe to expose Obama. So I have the credential. In other words, I was telling left liberals in 2008, "You're being duped. Watch like out." You. We Today, to World War III, I tell right? people like you, you're being duped by Ron Paul. Spit. Same story. Let me move on to the next issue. <laughs> I suppose. Now, let me just talk about your triumphalism, right? What you're, what you're saying that uh, the Patriot Movement is whatever this is. Oh, we're failing. Let's, you're such a good friend of liberty. Let's talk about, let's talk about something we're real. We're feet soon. You better get other subjects. Okay, let's talk about what it takes. You want to break the power of finance capitalism? Because that's what, that's what Bilderberg yeah, is. Yeah, like 10 minutes on batteries. Builder, Bilderberg is finance capitalism in the NATO framework. What is it? You want to break... Phony, centralized you, government. You want to break their power. You better find an example that works. Now, Info. Ron Paul com. doesn't work. Ron Paul doesn't work. Adbusters. Adbusters. Come on, you got to stop heckling like I'm that. I'm just joking, Webster. Yeah, now but, I got to air sin. Get into the other issue. Yeah, Steve. I, I, I am. How bad Ron Paul is. So not Ron Paul and not Occupy Wall Street are effective. What is effective? Let's look at Greece. The Syriza movement of Alexis Tsipras. That has gone from four percent to thirty percent. Right. One of the big themes that's going on in this uh, Bilderberger meeting is that they are terrified of Alexis Tsipras and the Syriza movement. Why? Because he has all the things we don't have. They have a leader, that's Tsipras himself. They have an organization, that is the Syriza, which is 12 components that have now been welded together into the most fighting force in the country. They now have a program. Let's go through the program. It's not like Ron Paul's. It says, roll back austerity, no way cuts, no pension cuts, if public workers are fired, hire them again. Second point, stop anti-worker measures. Stop union busting. Rand Paul and Ron for union busting, right? They're scabbing on every union in the country. But in Syriza, it's the opposite. Third point, social justice. I know some people think that's a terrible thing. Fourth point, investigate the crash. Put the felon bankers in jail. And the fifth point, debt moratorium. Don't pay Goldman Sachs. Don't pay Morgan State. Don't pay 
J.P. Morgan Chase. This is okay. all fraud. It's all fraud. This, this is what the bankers hate and fear. This is what is winning in Greece. Now, if you want to break the power of finance capital, you've got to have something on that along those lines. I would say one of the main themes being debated in here is the question of whether there'll be a coup d'etat in, in the next two weeks. The elections are on June 17th. Right now, Syriza will emerge as the largest party. The trick of the Greek parliament is if you come in first, you get 50 votes extra. You get a, a bonus for coming in first. If they do, we will have essentially the first anti-banker government in the Western world. No, no, Iceland, this Iceland, is, Iceland. They never had an anti-banker government. They, they never it had it. They threw it out. They, they had a social democrat who was finding ways to... The other thing about Iceland, the stuff about Iceland is baloney. You know why? Because the living standard in Iceland has been cut in half. The devaluation of the Icelandic crap cut the living standard in half. So if you want to be serious about breaking the power of the bankers, you better have those five things. A leader, an organization, a program, I guess it's four, and a, and a strategy. And the strategy is no austerity, no deals, don't enter into any austerity coalitions. Now, the other thing is, you're concerned about dictator. I'll tell you how dictatorship comes. One way is what we just saw in Greece, right? 